It is a well-known fact, if you followed the channel for any period of time, that I was a big fan of the Hoka Speedgoat 3s. I spent lots of training and race miles in that shoe, including finishing UTMB in 2018. Unfortunately, the same couldn't be said about the updated Speedgoat 4s. It never felt as good as the 3s. It didn't seem to fit my foot shape as well. And I lost a lot of connection when I was out on the trails and I just didn't feel that stable running in the shoe. Fortunately for me, I gave them away to a good friend and he loved that shoe. But today is a great day because we finally managed to get our hands on a pair of the new Speedgoat 5s. I've got really high hopes for this shoe. So let's give you a few quick facts and figures all about the latest version. And then we need to get these on our feet, get out on the trails and see how they perform. Fingers crossed. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and you are watching Run For Adventure. Hope everybody is fit and well out there and you've been enjoying the content we've been putting on the channel. If you have, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there, come along and join the Run For Adventure family, but also hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting running content. Now, it seems to me like I've been waiting for the Speedgoat 5s for an absolute eternity, as I'm sure a lot of you at home feel the same way. So it's great to finally get hold of a pair. So let's jump into the video, give you a few facts and figures on this very popular Hoka trail running shoe. Unfortunately, the first things I have to mention is there has been a price increase. So it now retails in the UK for £130 compared to the £125 of the previous version. So not quite the same increase that we saw with the Peregrines, that massive jump up in price of £15, just been a fiver added to the price. Uh, it still runs off of a four mil heel offset and it now weighs in at 308 grams in a men's UK 10. Let's talk about some of the biggest changes that have been made in the new Speedgoat 5 and clearly it is still a deeply cushioned trail running shoe but this time around Hoka have used a slightly lighter compound in that midsole bringing down the overall weight by 15 grams but Hoka still reassure us that it's going to deliver that sort of signature soft cushioned ride and they haven't had to reduce any of that stack height when it comes to the midsole. We are seeing some big updates when it comes to the upper construction as well and it is great to see Hoka using lots of recycled fabric when it comes to that upper construction and we've even got recycled polyester being used in the laces so a nice touch there. So you now get this double layered jacket mesh construction making it a, a nice and breathable soft lightweight finish. We've got reduced overlays on that upper as well to try and bring that weight down a little bit further. Something that, if I'm honest, does worry me a little bit, especially knowing the history of the Speedgoat and durability. The original version and the Speedgoat 2 both had issues and a lot of that was down to overlays or lack of overlays. So hopefully the latest version is gonna hold up to those miles well. Following on from a lot of the new models within Hoka's range, we've got a redesigned heel counter on the shoe. Um, so we've got that sort of added flair to the heel to make the shoe nice and easy to get on and off, but also to try and take a bit of pressure away from the Achilles tendon. Uh, we've got good depth on that heel and we've got a bit of substance and structure, which is really nice to see especially after spending a fair few of my runs in the very understructured Ultra Mont Blanc. So uh, it should feel good to have a bit of substance wrapped around my heel again. I'm very happy to see that we've still got Vibram Mega Grip rubber coating those five mil lugs on the outsole. Looks very similar to the previous two versions, but Hoka do say there has been a slight sort of tweak into that lug layout. And they claim that this is gonna be the grippiest version of the shoe to date. So we'll give that a thorough testing, that's for sure. But there you go, a few facts and figures on the shoe. We'll give you a few more when we get back for the run, but I can't wait any longer. So excited to get these on my feet and get them laced up. And please let it be a really good update. So let's get outside and let's hit the trails. Now, 
And there might be a few OG supporters of the channel that recognize that little bit of B-roll at the start of the running video. We have headed down to St. Ives, parked up, and we are heading out onto the Zena Loop. A stunning route to run. I haven't been out here for years and years, and this route really does play a big part in my trail running. And on a day like today with the sunshine, it's gonna be epic out there. So let's get out on the route and I'll show you what I mean. Not a bad little view in the background there. So you can just see St. Ives down there. And then right over the far side is the golden sands of hail. So that's obviously where we're based. So the Zeta Loop starts in St. Ives and you pick up the inland trails across some of the farmer's fields, all the way to the beautiful little village of Zena. Once we hit Zena, that's kind of the turning point, but on the way back, a very different route. So. We're gonna pick up the coast path and some really challenging technical sections of coast path. So this route is a perfect test out for the new Speedgoat 5s. We've got about 10 miles to run on a massive mix of terrain. So awesome to be back out here, man. And hello spring, I'm loving this weather. Although I think I am a little bit overdressed, right? We might have to strip a few layers off and we've got lots of styles to go over, but Oh, so good to be back out here. Love the Zena Loop. Always super important whenever you're crossing any inland trails across farmers fields make sure you hook the ropes back on make sure you close all the gates because we have to keep these farmers happy so that we can access these amazing inland trails so there you have it we have made it into the beautiful little village of Zena I've got the church just ahead of me there but I thought I'd just give you a little tour of the village because again this is a great route to come out and walk and run you can run out from St Ives to Zena got some lovely little cafes and a really good pub so let's give you a little tour so just behind me we've got the Tinner's Arms a great little pub that's for sure great beers great food and you can stay here a really amazing place to stay you've got easy accessibility to the coast path both ways a short walk to the St Ives or you can head out to the Gurner's Head, again, another great restaurant. So yeah, Tinner's Arms, definitely worth checking out. And then behind me, you've got the Moo Made of Zena Cafe, which uh, are very famous for their uh, homemade ice cream, which is delicious, but also a nice little gift shop there. And you can get lunch there as well. Again, another stunning location, as you can see. Little stream running by. So yeah, if uh, you ever come down to uh, Zena, I definitely recommend stopping for an ice cream in Moo Made and maybe getting a nice pint and something to eat in the tinners. Right, let's head off. We are heading towards the coast path now. This is definitely a loop of two halves. So I've done five miles across the fields there. Again, some pretty challenging points where the cattle have been sort of grazing in the fields at the gateways, really rutted and quite tricky and technical, but lots of flat runnable trail. We've got this little bit of hard standing about half a mile. And then we're gonna pick up the coast path where the route definitely takes a turn for the more technical uh, level of running. So lots of challenging sections, lots of steep ups and downs, and lots of sort of rocky outcrops that can be really challenging, especially if you're moving at pace. So it's gonna be a really good test for the shoe. So we have made it to the top of the infamous Zena steps. Uh, this area is featured a lot in all the uh, Arc of Attrition videos I've done. And this is always a highlight for me when I get to Zena in the Arc of Attrition, I know I've pretty much cracked the race, but I just realized I've been having so much fun out here on the loop that I haven't even smoke about the shoe yet. So far, so good. Uh, I've got to say the Speedgoat 5 is feeling very Speedgoat-like and dare I say it, 
very speed go three like so i am a happy boy as far as that midsole cushioning uh again very very soft very comfortable very bouncy i know i'm running in a hoka speed goat that's for sure uh, we haven't had anything too challenging but I feel pretty connected and I have to say it quite a bit more connected than I ever did in the Speedgoat 4s and, and that's already, this is the first run straight out of the box across the fields onto a sort of 10, 11 mile run and the shoe feels very comfortable. The one thing I will say is coming across the fields there, uh, the laces did work a little bit loose so I've had to retie those laces down to get a good sort of mid foot hold especially as we're heading out on the most technical section of the run. Um, something that can happen in shoes, it's not something I'm a big fan of having to keep stopping and retying my laces. It might just have been that I didn't do them up tight enough to begin with. So we'll find out in a minute as we're heading back to St Ives. But yeah, like I just said, so far so good. Really enjoyed those first six miles. We're gonna be heading into the technical areas now. So this is where the shoe's really gonna get tested out. Obviously the Spigo is a deeply cushioned uh, trail running shoe. So sometimes you can lose quite a lot of connection in shoes like that. I never had that issue when I was in the Spigo 3s, but I definitely had it in the 4s. So let's get out there. Let's see what happens. Just heading into a section of the Zena Loop where a lot of people think they've gone the wrong way because the coast path literally disappears and you are left in this kind of epic rock field. You have to sort of pick your way through, find bits of trail and go really, really steady because for instance here, you can see there's some pretty big gaps to fall into and you've got to be really careful with your footing. The good thing is, I'm in a speed goat and we got Viber Mega Grip on this outsole and as it always does, it is performing amazingly well on the rocks, on the wet rocks, running down that river back there. No issues with grip, felt super confident. So the outsole has always been a part of the speed goat that's impressed me and it's no different on the fives. Super grippy, great levels of traction on rock and wet rock. So yeah, awesome. Eight miles done, about three miles to go, but you don't get a much more varied testing ground than the Zenaloo, that's for sure. And I'm loving it, especially in this glorious weather. Right, let's crack on. We are currently working up one of the many short, sharp hills on this route. There's nothing majorly long when it comes to climbs, but they're all pretty steep and there's lots of them. There's pretty much no flat running on this section. So it's quite hard to get in a rhythm. And when you haven't been out here for a long time, you forget how relentless it is. But also, what a great training ground it is. So we are definitely going to be coming out here more over the coming months as we build up to August for TDS. We need to get them legs strong and this is the place to do it. And when you've got views like that to inspire you and to give you energy, what could be better, right? Let's get to the top. Woo! seeking a bit of shelter it's pretty windy as we come over that headland but that view as you come around that headland of St Ives always takes my breath away we've got a good 12.3 miles in our legs today 
the longest first impressions run I've ever done and I've never filmed so much on a first impressions run either but I just had to keep stopping and filming to try and show you guys as much of the route as possible. Such a positive run today, great to be back out on the Zena Loop, incredible weather, the legs are feeling really good even though it's my longest run for a while and I did a challenge in 37 miles on the mountain bike on Sunday with four and a half thousand feet of elevation and my feet feel like they've been to a spa and been pampered so the Spigo 5 super comfy straight out the box and we've had every type of underfoot condition. I suppose the only negative thing on the run is we've got about a mile to go until we get back to the car and unfortunately that's all on tarmac and all uphill so uh, we're going to head back to the adventure bus and we'll see you guys in the studio. Well, that was a pretty incredible run and sorry it's been a long video, but everywhere just looks so stunning out there today. I had to keep stopping, putting the camera down and filming just so I could show you guys as much of the Zena Loop as possible, especially in weather like that, it looks so epic out there. Uh, sorry if my throat is a little bit croaky as well. I don't think I drank enough water. It was pretty warm at times, so I am quite dehydrated. So just trying to top up with fluids now, but let's dive into how the new Speedgoat 5 performed on today's run. Firstly, when it comes down to sizing and fit, I would say in true Speedgoat style, it does size up a little bit short. So I'm glad that I stuck with a UK 10. I've always run the Spigo in a UK 10 and the fives fit me just right when it comes to the length. Uh, when it comes down to width, I wouldn't say it's the widest shoe in the world and I actually think if anything, they've made it a little bit narrower in the fives. It fits a lot more like the threes to me. Uh, I've got quite a narrow foot, so that's a real positive thing. I love the fit of the three and I wasn't that happy with the fit of the four, so that's all good. Uh, also, I would say that the toe box is quite shallow. So again, no issues for me, but um, I'd say if you've got a bit of width and a bit of depth to your foot, then maybe the width fit option would be a better choice rather than the standard fit. But all in all, great fitting shoe on my foot shape. Really good lockdown, really well held in the heel and definitely fitting me a lot better than the Speedgoat 4. With Hoka using that lighter compound through the midsole, the shoe did run pretty light and feel quite nimble in those technical areas. Obviously at 308 grams in a UK 10, it's not the lightest trail running shoe in the world, but when you think of all the depth of cushioning under your foot, the weight actually isn't that bad and it does feel nice and balanced. That midsole also gave me that very cushioned, comfortable ride that we sort of come to expect from the Speedgoat franchise. And my feet and my legs still feel pretty fresh now, even after 14 miles. And considering that is my longest run since the Serpent Trail back in July last year, that has to be a positive thing. Like I'd expect, the outsole of the shoe performed really well on today's run. That Vibra Mega Grip rubber giving me fantastic levels of grip on all the rock that I ran over, whether it was wet or dry just like every other speed go I've ever run in. Hoka made some bold claims about the latest version saying it's going to be the grippiest speed goat today. Uh, I wasn't sure whether I'd find any sort of muddy sections out there on the route today but uh, at one point I was actually ankle deep running through a muddy bog and maybe I kind of agree with them. You know I think the traction from that new lug pan was slightly better than previous Speed Goats that I've run in. So all in all, a great first run in the Speed Goat 5. I personally think when you can take a new shoe straight out of the box, run nearly 14 miles on a really challenging route, and it feels like you've been in the shoe for six months, you know, that can only be a good positive thing. The one thing I will mention is, and I mentioned it in the video when we got to Zena, coming across the fields there, when I got there, the laces had worked quite loose and I had to retie them to sort of get that midfoot hold back in the upper. Uh, unfortunately, when I got to St. Ives, another 
five or six miles into the route, the same thing had happened again and I had to retie those laces. It's not a big massive problem, but it is something that I don't like happening in my trail running shoes, especially if I'm running in technical areas because I don't want to lose that sort of midfoot hold in the upper, which can affect stability in the shoe. So I might have to try putting in a new pair of laces to see if I can stop that from happening. So there it is, folks, our initial thoughts. Now, we had to wait some time to get hold of a pair of the new Speedgoats, but I definitely think it was worth the wait. And I'm excited to get them back on my feet, rack up some more miles in them before we bring you our full in-depth review. And I'd say the new Spigo 5 is definitely in the running when it comes to the shoe that I'm gonna use for TDS at UTMB later in the year. Really hope you've enjoyed the video, guys, and those stunning views out on today's route. Uh, I've left a link in the description below for the Speedgoat 5s if you wanna check them out in a bit more detail. Uh, I'd also recommend if you're ever in this part of the world, down here in Cornwall, it's well worth getting out on the Zena loop for a run. Maybe stop halfway at the turning point in the tinners for a cheeky half. But if you have found the video helpful, you know what to do, guys. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But don't forget, you can also follow us on our other social media platforms, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, or Strava. And you can also support the channel through our Patreon page for as little as two pounds a month. It really does help keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. And obviously we really, really appreciate your support. So I've left a link in the description for our Patreon page. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. <laughs>